And that's how theme song goes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. If you didn't know, this is the only podcast. For, <laughs> what? Oh, my God. I was thinking about what I say for the application. If you didn't know, this is the only podcast. This is the leading podcast for the website. He comedy.com. Like I said, it's a website. Go there. I don't know what's going on. I, I, audition is having some issues today. I just got done recording the application. And now Audition's being a little butt face over there doing something. I think I have a notification on my phone, but I can't see it right now. It doesn't matter. Hey, this is the application podcast. This is the weekly podcast for cpluscomedy.com where we talk about stuff, all types of stuff, big stuff, small stuff, some as big as your head. <laughs> the uh, All right, let's get to the first thing, please. I'm so tired. Let's get to the first thing. Uh, I, so I saw this article not even like 40 minutes ago uh, that that it started talking about from the rap uh, saying that YouTube premium is no longer one of the top 10 streaming services in the United States, which is crazy that it's even getting beaten out by something like uh, direct TV now, which is insane. Uh, but I, I, I would think that. YouTube premium, it would be such one, one of those easier streaming services to access because, you know, it's, it's you already have the app. It's a or, or YouTube premium. Oh, I'm thinking of YouTube TV. Oh, wow. YouTube TV is not even in there. <laughs> so YouTube premium is not even in the top 10. That's a thing that you get free with Google Play Music. And I can only imagine that the real fight between music streaming competitors is between Apple Music and Spotify. So if you're an, if you're an iPhone user, I mean, you can get all three. If you're an iPhone user, you can get Google Play Music. Uh, but it, it just doesn't make sense uh, to choose between Apple Music or Spotify. Apple Music is already on your phone. Spotify has this good UI and and everyone knows it. Everyone knows how to work Spotify. I think that's just crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it makes sense that no one knows how to use YouTube Premium. So here are the top 10 over the OTT streaming video market uh, video services uh, from Parks Associates. Number one, Netflix. Number two, uh, Prime Video. Number three, Hulu. Uh, number four, HBO Now. Number five, Stars. Number six, stars is ranked so high. Why is that? Who out of their in their right mind is saying, let me choose, let me get HBO and let me get stars, but no other premium cable channel. <laughs> I mean, no other premium channel. Yeah, it's still cable. Uh, MLB TV, which makes sense. Showtime, CBS All Access. <laughs> old old people, I guess, was that one. Sling TV and Direct TV Now. Why is Direct TV Now even in this? The, a lot of these don't make sense. Who is choosing stars over Showtime? I would. It goes in the order in this order. It goes uh, HBO, Showtime, uh, Stars, and Cinemax. I was going to say Cinemax and Stars, but Cinemax doesn't have any original shows anymore. And I like Stars more than I like Cinemax. But Stars does not have a good selection of movies. No offense to them. Again, stars. If if you want, if you want me to make something for you, I got you. I got tons of ideas. It's. I think that's insane. But YouTube Premium is a different. I don't know. I guess it's. I well. I mean, it is. These are just for streaming. Well, I don't even know. This is not streaming services because it doesn't make sense that this is. I don't know because if Direct TV now is included, YouTube TV should be included in the in the pot. You, under, you get what I'm saying? Like if Hulu's in there, then it should be YouTube TV as well. If Showtime's in there, YouTube TV. If it's uh, CBS All Access, YouTube TV. Direct TV, because these are all things that you can watch live same day stuff on. But Hulu does SVOD, does have SVOD in the parentheses next to it. Very strange. Uh, YouTube Premium was in seventh place last year, according, but it just fell off the list. It was beaten by CBS All Access, Sling TV. Sling TV makes sense. Who Direct TV Now must be bolstering its numbers because AT and T includes Direct TV Now with a bunch of bundles, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. Let's move on. Let's move on to the other thing. Uh, another thing, another article that just came out. Apparently, there's a Breaking Bad movie in the works. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to follow Jesse Pinkman right after the series. There's not much known about it. It just says this is uh, this is I'm reading this on Slash Film. Apparently, they got the exclusive. So good for them. Uh, who wrote this article? Good for Jacob Hall. Uh, so it takes place after the, the series. Uh, Walt is shot and killed 
and he's looking up at the ceiling of his of this drug warehouse. Jesse Pinkman, who was taken hostage in the last season at some point, is driving off in this car and he's happy and he's crying. And that's how the show should end. And that's how the series should end. No one, we don't need this uh, follow up. But apparently, Gilligan put out a log line. And this is a long line. The movie would, quote, track the escape of a kidnapped man in his quest for freedom. And that's the end of that. (laughs) I don't know. I don't think I don't think this needs to exist. I mean, you already have Better Call Saul. You're already killing it. Well, AMC must be really because with this news and the news that Andrew Lincoln is going to not die in The Walking Dead. No, no, no. He's going to star in three movies, (laughs) three movies for the franchise, which I think is insane. They shouldn't have baited and switched everybody thinking that he was. Everyone knew Rick Grimes is not going to be on the show anymore. Also, I would not have said Rick Grimes is not going to be on the show anymore. However, it got out. I would have I would have just tried to keep like to tamper expectations and then let people find out organically. And on the video, I must look very comfortable because my hands are above my head. <laughs> but this is me trying to think of something to say. <laughs> I just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that, uh, but I think AMC is really trying to hit into the movie space. Yeah, but what are they going to do for three movies? And apparently there's a time jump. I read into it. I knew what I, I tried to know what was going to happen. All right, let's keep moving on. I got other stuff to talk about. So I have a, uh, Oh, the Walking Dead universe. I already talked about it. Oh my God, this is in my notes. I'm such a stupid idiot. Well, I just started this podcast over. And I mean, over from episode number one. And we talked about everything. You know, the breakup, uh, job hunts, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, so there's a Walking Dead universe. That's going to be coming out soon enough. So let's see. Uh, here's an article from Deadline that says Andrew Lincoln still in the Walking Dead world with Rick Grimes movies planned calls it end of the, the beginning, which is crazy. So this is what I gathered from the the review that I read on the AV Club. Uh, who, the reviewer, not a happy person about this, this, uh, this cop out. Uh, what happened to Carl? Did he die or did he leave the show? I know he left the show, but did he die or did he just leave? So here's, here's what happened. If you don't want to watch the walking dead and neither do I, I understand Rick was something happened last week and last week's episode, Rick was impaled on some type of metal pipe and went through his side. I saw that picture of that. And, and then in this episode, he somehow got off the pipe and he got into a car or something like that. I don't know. And he was seeing all of his dead friends. So that means people came back from the show, came back for the show, uh, including John Bernthal, who is the only him and Stephen Young are the only people on the walking, the history of the walking dead who have had uh, careers outside of the walking dead, which is not a knock against those other people, but it's just, it's just what happens in a high power drama like that. Uh, I've, I know I've already talked about this in an episode a long time ago, uh, where for the walking dead and for game of Thrones, no one in those shows, except for Stephen Young, John Barenthal for the walking dead and for game of Thrones, uh, bu- 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 let's see, um, Peter Dinklage. None of the, no one else has had a career outside of those shows. Like they're forever going to be tied to those shows. Like the, you can star in something and it could go poorly. Like, uh, uh, Kit Harrington in Pompeii. Why do I remember that? Kit Harrington in Pompeii. That's when, that's when I came up with a theory because it just, the movie was so big and people and like the advertisements made it look like it's going to be this huge blockbuster came out middling reviews. I think poorly, poorly performing. And that's, I mean, that's just how it goes for some people, for some people, Man, those the all these elections that happened last night. I'm really gonna timestamp this episode, but all those elections that happened last night and the back and forth was crazy. All I can say is vote early. Get out and vote and also vote early. So we've got so we got three movies coming, apparently. I need a table for this laptop so I can just read it like a normal person. We have three movies coming. And apparently at the end of the so so Rick, so this I'll keep on explaining the episode what I read. So and Rick sees all these all these people that have previously passed and they all talking to him or something like that. It's kind of like the, the last episode of uh Desperate Housewives when when Susan Myers is leaving the neighborhood, she and her daughter Julie are driving away from the neighborhood and they're moving out. They see all of the people that have died in the over the course of the show, (laughs) 
which is such a strange thing to come to hire actors and come back to this to this lot behind Warner Brothers. I assume they shot on Warner Brothers. I don't know. Fox lot. Who knows? And uh, and say, stand here. and You're going to watch them drive off. It's so strange. But that's what happened with The Walking Dead. Andrew Lincoln is. Oh, so. So his kid. So Rick Grimes, I, I guess as some woman. Uh, there was a helicopter and then someone came th- and they were like, oh, there's a helicopter. And then this helicopter came and they were like, medevac, medevac, you know, and then they flew, they flew Rick Grimes away and then they're never going to see him again. Then they, then they did a time jump and apparently uh, there was a baby. Oh, his wife had a baby. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. I was like, where did this baby come from? So there's a time jump and now Rick Grimes, daughter is a preteen in the mid season. This is a mid season time jump and his daughter's a preteen. And that is that is what what happened. So I don't know if there's a new episode next, this week, this coming Sunday. Who know? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't watch the show. But that was a very interesting thing. And I'm all for a mid series time jump, especially if you need to accelerate some stories. <laughs> so that's what. So that's what's happening. He 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 was medevaced. There were some. There were some people. I guess there was a fight or something like that. I don't know. I, don't know. I would have kept this close to the chest. I wouldn't have let anyone know that we were doing this, that that Rick was going to die. <laughs> and the final thing, J.J. Uh, Abrams has a mega deal in the works anywhere. He just like uh, Steven Spielberg, his idol before him. J.J. Uh, Abrams is looking to have a mega deal. This is from Variety. J.J. Abrams seeking record shattering overall mega deal. Several major Hollywood studios are courting J.J. Abrams, who is looking to land a lucrative mega deal with a big media company. So that basically means is he's going to sign up with with somebody like a Warner Brothers or a, I don't know, oh I'm sorry Time Warner Media I don't call themselves Warner Brothers anymore and or Warner Media and or a Sony he's going to sign up with somebody so they can give him money to make these big movies that he's been making, but they will pay a lot of money. Kind of like the Shonda Rhimes deal or the like Netflix paying Shonda Rhimes hundreds of million dollars or paying Ryan Murphy hundreds of million dollars or paying Kenya Barris hundreds of million dollars to make TV shows. Except this will be a lot more money. I guarantee it. And the only people that have are able to make this type of deal are these are these huge, 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 huge directors like Steven Spielberg, like a George Lucas. Also, other people who haven't touched a Star Wars. I can't think of anybody right now, but uh, Abrams' deal with Warner Brothers TV, which he originally signed in 2006, is up in May of next year. Paramount deal, also for us in 2006, expires in March of 2020. Conversations with the suitors are happening at this early stage, partly because of the complexity of the deal. Wow. So he could see, uh, you know, obviously he's going to see the uh, hundreds of millions. I know for a fact I can hear it in my head. <laughs> the sirens outside. Also, you know, before when I had to, I had to re-record a little bit of the the intro, but uh, I, I heard the rain outside. It's getting so loud. Jesus, I am so sorry for that, guys. <laughs> oh my God, it's so loud. It's so annoying. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, let's keep going. But uh, realistically, three uh, these people have said the race is down to Disney and Comcast Universal, and both certainly have the infrastructure to indulge him in these efforts. The Warner Brothers and its parent Warner Media are still in the mix. I don't know if Disney has the, you know, if he it's, and this depends on who he who he uh, hooks up with because if he does it with Disney, I mean that yeah that's fine and obviously that they're the the biggest studio production house company they're the biggest well I don't know they're one of the biggest in the world. But he can only do so much with them, you know, if he wants to make the the dark Cloverfield sequel that he wants to make the only movie he the only movie he needs to make, then he's not gonna be able to do that. And if he wants to make uh, the because, I mean, Disney's all family friendly, but if he does it with Universal, he can he can do whatever he wants with it. But obviously, it's going to be less money. So we'll see where that goes, where that lands and where that takes him. It's going to be it's going to be very strange. Like, see, James Cameron, he's doing he's been for the past. When did when did Avatar come out? 2009, 2008. I was I was young when it came out. So I'm still young, but it was I was young when it came out. 
I remember seeing that. And that was like the early, that was one of the first 3d movies. <laughs> and and I mean like good, like decent 3d where you'd have to put on plastic glasses. You had to put on these heavy plastic glasses, but man, 3d movies today have it easy. And I don't even know if they still release movies in 3d. I know they do children's movies. And apparently I think Thor Ragnarok was in 3d too, but that's neither here nor there. Those, their glasses were these thick, glasses that old people would wear when they got their eyes dilated, pupils dilated. And these thick, I remember these thick glasses, they barely fit over my, my, my glasses at the time. And, uh, they weren't like these red and blue ones. Those, those papery red and blue ones that are really crappy that would make your head hurt. But you see like the picture would pop out and, but you have these colorized lines around the characters around the scene. And it was just so ugly. And I hated that. And that's why, and I never liked three movies. And I think that's why I don't like avatar. Also avatars, you know, <laughs> not good, but <laughs> that's not even there. But that's, I mean, that was, that was one of the original 3d movies. And now we've got three avatar movies coming in the next three years. <laughs> Who wants this? No one wants this. And those titles are so bad. Okay. I'm not, I'm not here to dish on avatar, but there you go. So Abrams is looking for a new deal. Hey, listen, uh, we're gonna take a break. I'm going to jump into this next half of this show and I'm going to talk about emptying my email. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a wedding I went to this past weekend. So thank you so much for listening. We'll continue and a snap of a finger. There it is. Okay. We are back. It's like nothing happened. <laughs> so much happened with during my break, guys. I, I went outside. I played in the rain and uh, saw his bus full of cheerleaders. It was amazing. They all stopped and said, we want to play with you, Chad. And I was like, stop it, ladies. We, I got a show to record. I'm like, ooh, you're the, you're the guy who hosts that really cool show, News Time on C Plus Comedy. And I was like, yeah, you guys sound weird. I don't want to hang out with you anyway. They're like, four. <laughs> and then they left but not before all flashing me <laughs> uh, I'm insane in the membrane alright so what are we talking about now oh we're talking about the wedding so this past weekend I just uh, another one of my friends got married and if you're keeping count that is in fact all of my friends who were married <laughs> which is very true uh, or boot up. I got nobody. It's fine. You know, uh, one of these days I'll be able to afford Red Dead Redemption 2 and I won't need anybody. But until then, I just bide my time with the games I own. <laughs> oh, my gosh. OK, so I went to this wedding. It was in Nashville. This is my third time in Nashville. Right. Uh, I do. Oh man. I have this story that I can't tell that happened at a wedding. I went to and that not at a wedding that happened after the wedding, uh, <laughs> at my friend's house. <laughs> oh, I can't talk about it. Okay. Anyway, one, one of these days I'll tell you that story. It's a very, very funny story <laughs> that changed the way I look at one of my friends forever. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so I went to this wedding in Nashville. I drove up on this uh, Saturday. I think, did I mention this last week? Drove up on a Saturday. And actually, I went for a jog that morning, which was insane of me to do. It was so stupid. I went for a jog. I woke up at like 530, like I usually do on my, like I wake, I keep waking up at 530 because because I go to the gym at uh, 530. So I woke up at, I usually wake up at, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. So I woke up at 530. And I, I looked at the weather and I thought, nah, it's too cold to run. It's like, it was like 42 degrees. Even if I put on sweatshirt and all this stuff, I don't have a sweatshirt, a jacket and sweatpants and all and thick socks, you know, still. So I decided, so I said, I'll wait till seven. So I knocked out, I knocked out news time, which was insane, which is crazy. I put it all together. I downloaded all the assets, threw it all together. And then at seven o'clock, it was the uh, Google said it was going to be you know, f uh, 60, 50 something degrees, like, like 55. So I said, okay, I was going to run, ran. Uh, I didn't want to go to four miles. I knew it was going to hurt. I made it to like 3.8, something like that. And my chest was hurting. It was so cold. My, my hand was, fr my hand was frozen. Cause this is the hand I have the water bottle in my hand was frozen. And I, so then the hat, so like, uh, I was like, I was like two minutes from, well, two minutes in runtime from my house. And so I started, I started, I switched hands and I started just doing this. And then this hand started freezing up <laughs> and the water's not even cold. It was just, it was just so cold outside. And if you keep your hands like not moving, you know, it just, they freeze up. So 
I mean, I mean, it was a very, very eventful run. Then I knocked out a little bit of, uh, no, I did the grocery shopping before then. So then, uh, so I left and I went to the, I went to the wedding. I drove to Nashville. Uh, it turns out that all of my friends, all of my guy friends that were going to the wedding were a part of the wedding party <laughs> and I wasn't invited <laughs> And so I called up one of them. I said, what are you guys doing? What I said, I said, Hey, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in Nashville in a second, uh, or near Nashville in a second. And he's like, okay, cool. Well, we're at this church. And, was, and he goes, Oh, I go, Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can't do anything then. And then I call up my other friend and go, Hey man, what's up? And he's like, Hey, he's, he's like, I just with a bachelor. And I'm like, Oh, I was like, crap. Are you kidding me? So they're doing whatever. So all the guys are doing whatever. And, uh, and so I'm, so I just go, okay, why not? I'll just hang out at somewhere. So I try to find a place to charge my car, a hotel. I found a Hilton in, uh, Murfreesboro to charge my car. Uh, and I, so I couldn't fall asleep for the longest time. Cause I knew I had, I knew I had to take a nap. I couldn't fall asleep for the longest amount of time during this. And then so around two 30, I'm listening to one a and, or I'm listening to some video game podcast and I, and I fall asleep and I managed to fall asleep and, and then I say, okay, I'll wake up at three 30 and then I'll just leave. I'll just drive off. I, I, I keep, I keep sleeping and it's, it's three 30. I go, Oh God, I gotta go. <laughs> and then I have to, I have to throw my suit. I have to go pee inside this hotel. Also, you can just walk into a hotel and nobody will say anything, which I've experienced several times before I go, I change and everything. I leave at three 35. It's the, uh, the thing or no, I leave it like three fifteen or something like that. And it's, and I'm, and I'm 10 minutes away from the venue. And so I drive off and these people in Murphy's Brown, Tennessee and Tennessee in general, they drive so freaking slow. Speed limit can be whatever it could be 40 and they can go 31 and I'm just sitting behind people. I'm like, come on guys, come on. <laughs> you know? And then I get there and, uh, as if on time I get there at three fifty nine for three fifty nine. as this is the, the only time that this has ever happened. The, the wedding starts at four o'clock and, and the, the guys, the, the, this guy at this farm, I'm the weddings at a farm, the venues at a farm. And, uh, which is, this is also too many farm weddings, <laughs> way too many farm weddings. <laughs> people, please stop having farm weddings. <laughs> I've been to two many. And, uh, I, so I, so I drive up and the guy goes, he goes, not where I started. So you just have to park down here. And I go, Oh, okay. So I have to walk up and this other girl's uh, late. And then these other two people Uber up there too. So there's four of us and it's a couple and it's a girl and then it's me. And so I'm, I'm walking up behind this girl I mean, this sounds so weird. I'm walking up behind them. I, I don't know. I don't think they know each other. I think they tangentially know each other. Like they, I don't think they know each other's names, but the, uh, the three of them are talking to each other. They're not acknowledging me. I'm standing right beside them and I'm chiming in. And they're not acknowledging me. You ever been in that situation where we're here with someone with people and you're in the same situation and no one's talking to you. It's very strange. It makes you feel invisible. But I'm dressed better than them, so no big deal. So we, so then the the wedding coordinator, I guess, is uh, says tells us that we can hang out by the gift table, which is like 15 feet diagonal to the wedding party. Before we like, we have to wait for the bride to sit down, and then we eventually, eventually, the bride comes out, and then she goes, "All right, go, go, go." So we we start running up behind, like behind where people sit. And, uh, again, I'm nobody. This couple finds two seats, uh, clearly a third near them. And they just, <laughs> they run in those two seats and people let them in and sit down. <laughs> and then this other girl just disappears <laughs> from the map. <laughs> And then I look over and there's some seats up front, but I don't want to be that person to interrupt the wedding and, and like come in from the side and sit down. And the photographer, she's, as she's pointing, she goes, she's right, right. I go, I go, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. And, uh, and the DJ offers up his seat and I go, you bet it's, you betcha, sir. And I sit right behind everybody in the DJ spot. And it's so strange. So I'm sitting basically cat a corner to where the, the, if the, if you're watching the video, watch, check out the video. So the, if we're, if we're facing the bride, the, the wedding, the wedding gifts or the directory or whatever this, the book sign thing is, is about, uh, is diagonally to, uh, the right behind them. And I'm diagonally to the left behind everybody. And, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm still a part of the wedding. I can still, I can like, I can lean out and touch the guy in front of me. So that's how, I mean, I, I was close. 
Uh, and, and then, uh, the, the wedding happens, it goes by in about 20 minutes, pretty, pretty quick. And, uh, I see my friends who are, who are the, who are groomsmen. Also the bridesmaids kept looking out to the crowd. Like, it's not your day. You focus on the bride, please. That is, this is so rude. Just, I saw this one girl who was right behind the maid of honor and she kept looking to the crowd. Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? She kept smiling. It's just, just <laughs> notice me. Uh, when I saw my friends who were groomsmen and then like, as the, as the, as the bride passed by everybody, they saw me and I go, I just wave <laughs> like a child <laughs> and I made them laugh. And that was the greatest thing that happened. <laughs> so amazing to make, <laughs> to make four idiots laugh <laughs> up there, right with the, uh, with the, uh, with the bride and groom. I hope they got it on video. So then we eventually, so now we're moving everything over to the barn and I run in. So I'm, so I run into a, a, a couple of friends I knew who got married to each other. <laughs> it sounds so weird to describe. I have some friends that got married to each other. I knew them both independently before they got married to each other and we hung out. And then one of the groomsmen's, uh, husband, I mean, wife, <laughs> very sorry, Mike, <laughs> uh, his wife comes and then she joins the conversation and I go, all right, great. I have three people I know here. This is awesome. <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes you go to these weddings and you don't know a lot of people, especially if you go alone, which I am very much alone. Uh, I was alone twice yesterday. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is the dirtiest thing I've said on this show. Um, so <laughs> I can't even transition out of that. So it was the three of us, the four of us. And then the other couple, they're friends with, uh, cause they, the, one of them went to grad school with the groom. So then I start talking to these, all these other grad school people. And so now it's just me and my friend's wife and we're just, you know, just, we're just shooting the mess. You know, it's, I, we, I, I honestly, there's a lot of people I have not spoken to in my friend's lives, like my friend's spouses, uh, like their husbands and wives, you know, I just haven't spoken to them a lot. And then, and so this is one of those times, but you know what, we, we hit it off. We we're there's, a, we have a lot in common and, uh, she can, she can get down with my jokes. And so that's good. It's great. Um, and then finally the groomsmen came out and now there's seven of us and we're all having a good time. <laughs> finally, there's so many of us <laughs> eventually get inside of the barn. Barn's beautifully lit. A uh, great, great seating. Uh, there's no food yet. We have to wait. Uh, but I'm, I'm sitting with some people I, I barely know from high, from college, from high school, from college. People I wasn't, and there's people I wasn't friends with. Somebody, I'm just going to go and say people I did not like, and they did not like me. But you gotta make nice. <laughs> And then, you know, you know, the entire time, especially since I came alone, because I, I was planning on bringing somebody to this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm turning around and I'm saying, oh, my God, Jesus, <laughs> that was thunder. I'm turning around and I'm seeing my other friends and I'm just like, I'm waving to them like, hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? You know, they're sitting at the table with the groom and all that stuff. Uh, but I had a good time. We all, everyone had a good time. We all, everybody just ended up hanging out. That was the same night that there was the, uh, the turn back to fall back. And I did not know that was happening. And we're out at a bar at, it's like 2 AM. And then, which means it's a 3 AM Atlanta time, which means it's way past daddy's bedtime. But then I noticed that we're still out and I go and I look at my watch and it's still, it's still 2 a.m. And I go, wait a minute, it should be. And they're, and they're like, no, no, it's, it, we're all falling back. And I go, oh my God. So I was out technically to 4 a.m. Atlanta time because the bar closed at, I guess bar closed at three. I don't know. We, the bar was still going on even when we left at three, it was crazy. Uh, Kung Fu, check it out. It's a place I've been to twice now. <laughs> no. Yeah. Twice. Three times. Have I been there every time I've been in Nashville? Yes. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so that's, that's what, that's what we did. And I stayed out all night long and I woke up, I, I went to bed at like four ish and then I woke up at six and I couldn't go back to sleep. Just watched vine compilations. And then I, then I had breakfast with a friend. Well, I barely had breakfast because the place we went to, I didn't have food. It was the food, the kitchen was closed down. And then I, then I came home. Then I had to go to some, uh, to a little party, a little family friend, a friend, of family, a friend of the family party. <laughs> I was the friend of the family. And that is the story of what I did this past weekend. I mean, some other stuff happened, but I mean, I'm not going to recount the entire wedding because there's nothing interesting that happened that much in the wedding. I did not mean 
this means nothing to you, but there's a lamp that I turned on over there by my desk and it should not be on because it's, I think it's messing up the lighting behind that second camera there, but whatever. So yeah, you should, you got to you check, <laughs> check out the application podcast, everybody. Cause I, I've expended a lot of energy on that and hopefully that's coming. That there's a job coming soon. Hopefully. Oh my God, please. So I can stop doing that stupid show and just rely on this in news time. Oh man. <laughs> Anybody still listening to this? It's been half an hour. Hey, if you like what you heard here, why don't you head on over to cpluscomedy.com where you got interviews and uh, where this podcast lives as well as the application. And you can see a video version of this show uh, in the same page, in the same post as this spot, as this episode. Also, can you tell if you're watching the video, can you tell I did, uh, <laughs> I did biceps today? Biceps and back. It's crazy. It's the Wolverine workout, the Hugh Jackman workout, excuse me. Uh, also on the website is news time. News time is a show that lives on youtube.com slash C plus comedy new as, along with the constitutionals video version. But news time is a show that is an entertainment news, show, weekly entertainment news show that talks about the news that you didn't know about. So I talk about a news story that you did not hear about or one that you did hear about, but I go in depth into it. Um, okay. <laughs> She's got stock news. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, so there's that. So there's all that stuff. Um, oh, this week's episode of news time is about, uh, voting and comedy. Sorry. Comedy's place and voting because there were the midterms. I was being very uh, topical. And then it's also about, I don't even know if that camera's on. And then it's also about the main story is basically, uh, soundtracks queen, the queen movie, Bohemian Rhapsody released last week. Uh, didn't have too many good reviews, but the track listing on the album is 27 to 30 tracks long. So I think, and uh, star is born reached, um, the billboard top 200 to reach number one for the fourth week in a row. And I think that I really do believe that queen's Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack from the movie is going to eclipse that handedly. So there you go. Other movie soundtracks that came out this year and soundtracks are, are uh, original soundtracks are, or soundtracks in general are the songs that are handpicked, like the pop songs uh, for the movie versus the film score, which is this, the, the, the wordless ones. The other ones that came out this year, the only other two original ones were the greatest showman and the black Panther. And, uh, and so it was, so those are the two original ones, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody's not, and then a uh, star is born is as well. So there you go. So definitely check it out. It's a good episode, way better than last week's episode. I'm not admitting that. Okay. So thank you for listening. I very much appreciate it. I love you. This has been the constitutionals. We'll see you next week, baby. Listen to the application. Bye.